continuing with neuronal anatomy, let's now talk about the axon itself. So to recap, you've got dendrites that receive the incoming signal, you've got the cell body with the nucleus, so the control center of the cell, and also the part that's making the neurotransmitters. The axon hillock, the very first part of the axon that determines the likelihood of an action potential being fired. And then let's say an action potential is fired. It's going to go down the axon. Uh, the only parts of the axon you would really be able to see would be tiny spaces or gaps in the myelin sheath that I'm trying to represent with pink here. Everything else is covered in fat. Okay, and then each one of those areas that we colored pink is called a node of Ranvier. This is named after the Frenchman who discovered this anatomical structure. So if you really want to try to say it right, you should say node of Ranvier. <laughs> Good luck with that. And most of the axon, though, like I said, is covered in myelin or fat. And of course, uh, yellow would be a great color for fat, right? So, um, do you remember the kind of cells that put this fat on the axons? In, oops, you couldn't see what I was doing. In the central nervous system, they're called oligodendrocytes, and in the peripheral system, they're called Schwann cells. For this axon, I've drawn um, Schwann cells, and the reason you might be able to figure that out is that the Schwann cells don't have the finger-like projections. See how they're just wrapped like a jelly roll? And then that dark dot is the nucleus of the Schwann cell. So the myelin sheath, and this would be the nucleus of a Schwann cell. So the electrical current can only go where there are gaps in the insulation. So what's going to happen, you'll find out, is the electrons, or sorry, the, um, the ions, the sodium and potassium ions, are going to move in and out through the cell membrane wherever there's a gap. So it's going to start here at the axon hillock and then they're going to keep going. They're going to move through here, and then 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 finish up at each little patch of membrane to here, and then the action potential has officially reached the end of the axon. In a motor neuron that's supposed to move a skeletal muscle, if anything happens to this myelin, then the signal um, is unable to make it all the way to the end. It will kind of just like peter out. And what we call that when the signal jumps, boom, 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 we call that saltatory conduction. Saltar means to jump. When I first learned this term, it was in um, an animal anatomy class where we were learning about how different animals run and the example that was given to me is like how deer run you know how they bound they go bong 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 they can or think of a gazelle or an antelope how it can jump st almost straight up in the air and that's um, they're considered to be saltatory runners because they can jump so well and in your body we talk about saltatory conduction of um, action potentials okay so what does it mean to have um, the action potential jump. Well, what it means is that you first start it here, an ion called sodium rushes in, and potassium leaves like that. So sodium comes in. That's called the depolarization step. 
and it's going to make the inside of the cell become more positive just for a moment. And then potassium leaves, and you see since they're both positive ions, now you go back to the negativity that the cell normally had. And meanwhile, all the rest of the cell is still what we call resting. It's, um, not, it's not been depolarized. Well, this one now goes back to normal, and then ions out here, outside of this region, they want to rush in to propagate the signal, and they finally have a spot because they can't rush in here. It's myelinated. So then the sodium rushes in here, and the potassium leaves. So this part has gone back to normal, and now this section is depolarized. Meanwhile, this section is still waiting. And then sure enough, now it gets depolarized. So it's like a wave effect of depolarization and repolarization, meaning going back to uh, rest, which for most cells is um, very negative on the inside compared to the outside. So sodium always rushes in to depolarize. Potassium is the ion that's allowed to leave for um, the cell to go back to normal. So sodium rushes in, potassium goes out. And what we call this, when you watch this happening over and over again, is the propagation of the action potential. It's kind of like the wave. If you were at a, uh, like a football game and everyone stood up in one region and then put their hands up and then put their hands down and then the next section put their hands up and their hands down, that's what's happening as the action potential is propagated. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The more myelin, the quicker the signal goes. So we can put that. More myelin. equals faster propagation. Okay, so now you have it. The parts of the neuron are the dendrites that receive the electrical signal um, via neurotransmitters, so the chemicals that cross the synaptic cleft, chemicals called neurotransmitters then either tell the dendrite, oh, don't fire an action potential, or do fire an action potential. And then all of the dendrites send their information to the soma, and then the axon hillock basically adds it all up and says, eh, okay, that's enough. We're firing an action potential, at which point it lets sodium rush in, and then it lets potassium leave. Now, sodium would want to rush in right here if it could, but that myelin prevents it. So it has to jump, and now sodium out here rushes in and potassium goes. So propagate, 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 propagate. And then once it gets to this area, sodium has to come in, potassium has to go out, has to keep doing it at every little patch. And so you can see it would be a little slower by the time it gets to the end. And then once the action potential reaches, the axon terminal, it's going to cause those synaptic vesicles to uh, exocytose their neurotransmitters, which will diffuse across the cleft and bind to receptors on the dendrite, and then the whole process begins again.